So after a question, we'll play on Patty Mills Tuesday against the Heat. Draymond was back to being Draymond Wednesday against the Magic. So cross pass with him. Dre was ejected less than four minutes into the game. Attack here. After arguing a foul call. So this was a call Wiggins. Dre got caught, I think, on a previous play. Really should have been a foul instead. Took exception to it. So after getting hit with the initial tech for arguing with official Ray Acosta, stepping on his foot. And you want to Green continue barking. So this doesn't grow. You got multiple guys. Stay in his face. Just coming over. Just the uh, he eventually uh, called Acosta a quote, pussy ass N word. Got to watch out. <laughs> He's letting them coming. Hear it. The, the officials are <laughs> called him a speak. pussy ass in work. Um, quote, he made his way back to the Warriors bench, uh, promptly booted from the game. Again, less than four minutes. Steph was visibly shaken. Uh, some people in the Warriors community said that he, he had some tears in his eyes. Not really sure, hard to tell from this angle. But very emotional in the moment. Some high grade light skin injury. Oh, he did. You think he did? Oh, he's breathing. Look at him. He's trying to hold back. Oh, shit. Okay. He was just emotional. He wiped his face oh. a few times. Right here. There's a tear right there. Them tears. <laughs> Dre's 19th career regular season ejection, fourth this season. He's only six away from time, Rasheed Wallace, but uh, it didn't matter. Three. Steph came through, showed the magic. He ain't no tricks. Hitting this game ceiling three, then hitting him with the night night celebration. <laughs> the layup, They're back. The three. After the game, uh, Steph walking into the tunnel. Super excited. Draymond was there waiting for him. <laughs> you see Drake coming up in the black shirt, hitting him with the night night, giving him the hug. <laughs> yeah. Diabolical, bro. <laughs> that is a diabolical man. So what do we what do we make of this situation? Hey man, Steph just he just had to get it out. When I get mad and frustrated, sometimes I just cry. So I understand him. You're not necessarily sad about nothing. It's just like you just got to let that out. Yeah, I feel more anger driven. Again, four minutes into the game. Just un it's been just a over it. Like, repeating yeah. issue. He's definitely over it. This season. Get the fuck out of there, man. Everybody, get the fuck up out of there. Long as he there, some bullshit going down, man. I feel bad for Jordan Poole. That's all I'm going to say. I'm fucked up that man whole career. Poole getting it back, though. He's been playing well. Yeah, it ain't the same. But he is in Washington, so. At least Steph has somebody to depend on. Take the pressure off of him. He ain't got nobody now. Yeah, what do you make of this situation with Draymond? Cause it, um, it feels like it, it, it keep happening. I don't. I mean, I don't like the, the the technicals because it's not like he was affected himself, right? It's you know he's arguing for someone else. Like he dipped his shoulder. So the fact that him and the ref is this close, which means they're having a, a conversation between each other. Um, the fact that the ref, would, no matter what he said, no one else can hear, so he's not showing you up, and you give him a technical for that. That's some whole shit okay. as a referee, right? This is not like I'm yelling across and the world can hear it. It's between me and you, which usually shows that I'm not trying to show you up. I'm trying to have a conversation with you. And then the second technical also, right? He's, he's walking away. No matter what he says, he's still walking away. Yeah. So now it's just your fucking ego. <coughs> bruised, yeah. Right? And that's, that's the problem with it. You let him say whatever he wants right in front of you, and then he walks away with the, what was it? Pussy ass N word was yeah, so. our expert lip readers here ah. on the Dog Fantasy. And Dre acknowledged it today on his show. Uh, he said that he probably should have turned his head and not said it in the ref direction. Yeah. And that was kind of the last straw. That it, it, it don't, it don't matter. <laughs> we, but that's what we got to use a, a lip reader to hear what he said because he, it wasn't loud enough for us to really hear it. So therefore, what are you giving it? You wanted to kick him out. And then, you know, with Steph, you know, it's, I, I think he's more just frustrated that it's four minutes in a game and you're, you're, you're so important to us succeeding that... This could be a loss when we need these wins. Yeah, I mean, they're fighting for their lives right now, holding down the 10th seed, got the Rockets surging. I mean, they did go on to win this game, so mm -hmm. I think it wasn't all for nothing, but this is Dre's fourth ejection this season. Uh, Rasheed Wallace currently holds a record with 25 career regular season ejections. Draymond inching closer. We had Sheet on the show. He said he was looking forward to see Draymond break that record. How many does he have? He has 19 uh, regular season ejections. That was his 19th in his career, <laughs> the career high four this season. Rashad, you got, you got to hold him accountable, man. Stop letting this man off the hook, man. 
it's easy to just shut the fuck up and play the ball. You know what the refs do. You've been knowing for your whole career. It ain't going to be even. It ain't going to be fair sometimes. Shit, fuck it. But the fact that when he came back from his suspension, he said he's not going to change. <laughs> he hasn't changed. <laughs> and Steph is tired of that because you should change because we need you. Yeah. And that's the point. I mean, he's so instrumental to this team, the heart and soul. But you got to take the good with the bad with Draymond. Like, I think we've talked about it for years. It's been going on for years. But is Draymond his own worst enemy? And how complicit have the Warriors been in allowing this behavior to continue? Yeah. I mean, we said it when he got suspended earlier in the season. There's not really much that they can do at this point. They've allowed this behavior to go on for so long. And again, like, I just don't know what his end game is. Like, is he trying to piss everybody off? Is he trying to upset Steph? Is he trying to upset the organization? Is he just like an agent for chaos? Like, I just, it's just odd at this point because now I've, we've never seen Steph react to anything in that way. And I don't think anybody really enjoy. I mean, people get their jokes off, whatever, but I don't, as a basketball community, I don't think anybody like enjoyed seeing Steph like stressed out like that. Yeah over someone else's behavior. It's definitely one of those things where you look at it. Visibly, Steph is saying what everybody's been trying to say to themselves, like, damn, Dre, you still on this shit? God damn, man, we just trying to hoop. Like, we get it, you trying to be this voice for us with the refs, and but shit, to get ejected when we need you most? Like, come on, bro, this, this time's up with this shit, bro. It's like that one kid that just keep crying, crying wolf. You know what I'm saying? You go, how long are you going to cry wolf before we look at you and be like, bro, it's your fault. You keep doing this. That's the, I mean, Steph and everybody else ain't really, they ain't saying nothing. Even him crying, it's like, you, what you going to say? Steve Kerr in the, in the interview. Yeah. He said, you know, he deserved it or whatever, but it's like, yo, is that enough? Is that all you're going to say is he deserved it? Because you're not speaking directly to him. But did he deserve it? Probably not. Did he deserve to get ejected, for, would you say, yeah. for that situation? I think the first tech, at least what the video showed, is that like he stepped on the ref's foot and may have bumped him. Oh, wow. I, yeah, I don't give a shit. I'm just oh a host. Or the, the step. The, but you know refs are he sensitive. Stepped, he stepped on the ref. Is that what he gave him a tech for? Did the ref say, I gave him a tech because he stepped on my foot? What was the actual tech? See, this is now, that's why I say, that's why I always say they remind me of cops. You put me over for a seat belt, and then you're giving me a ticket for something else. Uh, resisting arrest. Yeah. Nah, bitch, give me my seatbelt ticket. That's what you put me over for. Don't try to make it something else. What was the technical for? Was it stepping on his foot? Was it bumping him? What is the actual tech for? That's it. When are we gonna like we're watching refs in real time fuck games up, give people texts for no reason at all. You already know Draymond is the emotional dude on the team. So, any ref that's refing him can give him a tech and get him out of the game. And we're going to sit there and keep saying, well, Draymond won't shut the fuck up. Draymond won't shut the fuck up. That's his personality. So, the fact that I know his personality, I can target him every game. Exactly. That's the point. Because we know you go, if we give you a bad call, we know you're going to go off. And we can take you out the game because you don't know how to control your emotions. So, who's so fault is that? you think refs are, like, ganging up on... No, but I'm, so it's no different than, than like, we... we all right, let's, let's rewind time and go back to someone who was just like this, Rasheed Wallace, right? He won a lawsuit because of this. Where regular conversation became technical, technical, get him out. He won a lawsuit. In real time, we blamed him. Yep. Time passed off. <coughs> we realized, oh, they was cheating and, and fucking him and over. He got his money back. Right? So... These are normal conversations for this type of guy. And it's easy to just give him a tech for it. Is it you can just, that's what I said, you can go around giving the guy tech for anything. All of it is just bait him. Not bait him. But if you're Draymond, you know you got a target on your back. That's all I'm, you can't stop your behavior. You I, can't stop your behavior. You can't stop the behavior. You can't. Can. Especially Not if it's your for behavior. a foul call that wasn't even on Man, He can get a technical and kicked out every game. But it's just weird that he right did, that he did that because you, just, you, you can give him a technical every game when he plays. But he didn't. He wasn't even reacting to a play that had anything exactly, to do with him. Exactly. So like that's that's not weird to you. That's the problem. So he's having a regular conversation. You decide to give him a tech 
on what he's saying. Nah, but it ain't got nothing to do with you, so just say nothing. Him, so why just say nothing. He's the captain. Yo, what place. was it? Watch out for the shoulder. You're calling this weak one versus somebody just got hit down here. And that's what I'm saying. It's it's too easy. Yeah, it's but, like get get your get your what you gotta say off, and then yeah. when the breath walks but, away from you, just be quiet. It's like it's like Scott Foster with um Chris Paul. If Scott Foster gives Chris Paul a technical, do we really value? Do we really say, "Oh, that was fair"? Well, he got that. Well, we just got that one-on-one like, on one issue with but that's that what I'm ref. But Draymond, he got an issue but with I'm every single is, ref. We will, we will look game. at that Scott Foster tech and say that's some bullshit, no matter what, yep. because we know now Scott and him have a problem. Right, but, but Draymond CP is, is not the type of guy where we're going to look at like he's the problem. CP's never been the guy that's going to foster technical fouls from anybody outside of Scott Foster. So Draymond being a... got an issue with everybody. He got it. Like, they are, they're, they're targeting him. For sure. But it's like he's giving him a reason. Just with she. She was the same way. When she started talking and disagreeing with the refs, they targeted him because they knew he was going to say some shit. Well, that's what I'm saying. So if you're targeting him, then we can't say that he's... We can't put all the blame on him. No, you can't put all of it, but it's, he got to take some of the blame. Like, this is like the, the one before the Patty Mills. They could have kicked him out for that. For the Patty Mills? Yeah, they could have. Oh, yeah, you you grabbed him too close and grabbed his neck, and they said, oh, God, he didn't grab his... He Was didn't he spazzing on the refs after but he, that? He no, let he go, didn't though. spazz on the refs because he knew he had this. He, he did let go. Like but this one, this one, like, you... We see him. You guys are having a conversation. You guys are talking. Whatever you're saying, whatever he's saying, it's in the heat of the moment because you already gave him one tech. That's the problem. You gave him one tech that he probably didn't think he deserved, and he's asking you why. Why, yeah. why are you blowing a whistle? Why are you blowing a whistle? He said he was asking him, when did you get like this? <coughs> yeah. He's like, when did you get like this? When did you get like the point I can't talk to you? Yeah. Right? So it's not uh, what he's saying. It's how he's saying it. Draymond is talking to them a certain way that they just are uncomfortable with. So emotional. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So too emotional. That's what I'm saying. Two emotional people are having a conversation or whatever, but one gets to use his whistle to blow a tape. Right. Well, that's, that's it. Is like, it's it like, is. that's what I'm saying. Like, I, if, if he hits someone or something, at this point, it's just targeting. Right. And that's the only thing I don't like about it. So again, Draymond was on his pod today. Uh, he said the following, it just can't happen. I said what I said. I deserve to be kicked out at that point. Kind of wish I would have turned my body and angled it and gone to the bench, but yeah, it just can't happen. So, I mean, but it seems like a lot of the same stuff. But again, we talk about the passion that Draymond has and how meaningful it's been to this Warriors dynasty. It's not like this is something new for him. So at this point, it's like, do you just take it and we got to ride with it? I think it's being but highlighted it, now because they're struggling they're a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They top four in the West. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. the same Draymond stuff. Draymond. It's Draymond being Draymond. Yeah. Who cares? You yeah. miss a game in the finals. Draymond being Draymond, they got to the finals, it's fine, but they're fine for the 10th seed, and now, oh, well, Draymond got to stop. But yeah. like, y'all wasn't saying this when they was winning all those championships, so it's like, you got to see both sides, and I understand why Draymond just yeah. keeps doing what he does, because no one has stopped it before. And we pointed out that the Warriors essentially had to make a choice between Draymond and Poole. They chose Draymond. I feel like that's indicative of what he brings to that franchise, because no Draymond on this squad. It feels like it's open season on Steph, Clay, the rest of them do. To me, to me, the decision to keep him has nothing to do with the fact that Steph, is, can, be, Steph can be visibly shaken up about having his leader out of the game and keep moments of playoff runs. For me, it's look, looking back at, all right, this is the type of behavior that pushed this young fella out that could ultimately change the path of his career. And I'm like, if you're not going to change your behavior, just because you think that this is a consistent behavior and it should be okayed, that's the difference for me. It's like, bro, at some point we have to grow up. At yeah. some point we have to grow up and see like, look, this is not a good look. It was a good look me coming up because I established my ways and I established a soul, a, a soul identity in the league. This is me. But now it's becoming a little redundant. It's like every time you become you in moments you don't need to be you, you're penalized for it. And it may be unfair because he just wants to be him, but Steph is showing you like, bro, come on, not right now. Let's get the, let's get the game under control where we feel like we're in the driver's seat. Then you do that shit. Then I'm cool with it, but damn, that's the Steve Kerr conversation. We can't keep putting the team on Steph's back like this and expect him to take us to the promised land. When it, like, we need you. We need you. We never did it without you guys. Yeah. So after the game, Steph had this to say about the whole situation. No, I say we need we need him. He knows that. We all know that. Um, so whatever it takes to keep him on the floor um, and be available 
That's what's got to happen. So it's obvious Steph, you know, still wants to save this season. He's an ultra competitor. And if, you know, the Warriors have a chance to get in the playoffs, they can definitely make some noise. Obviously, he has major love for Draymond, all he's done for the Warriors dynasty. But I saw an interesting analogy that I feel like pretty much sums up this current situation. Uh, somebody tweeted, uh, Steph's like the responsible nigga who put the Airbnb on his credit card, and now there's holes in the wall and shit on the counters. Very specific. <laughs> But if you're stuffing the Warriors, at, at what point is enough enough? I'm just, you know. It's been enough. Man, we don't care, man. Shit, all right? <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> Every time he gets fucking in trouble, man, we did like, who cares? Like, we, he don't like him. I like him. She's 50-50. Okay? That's it. He's not going nowhere. <laughs> He's not going nowhere, all right? He's staying. They paid him to $100 million. He's here to stay. <laughs> like... <laughs> Hey, it don't matter if he chokes somebody tomorrow. <laughs> he don't care, dog. Nah, okay? We don't care, all right? If they win in championships, great teammates. <laughs> if he's losing, <laughs> maniac. We get it. We got the two narratives, okay? All right? And they are always in flood. They are always. Hey, listen, 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 listen. If they go on and get into the end, end season, somehow. Get to the Western Conference Final, Draymond's a guy. Absolutely. Right? If they don't make it, Draymond's an enemy. It's his We got it's his it. Fault. <laughs> it's his fault, yeah. Yeah. I think that he, he, got, he accepts that reality, though, that's but the penalty he embraces it. That's the penalty of leadership. Yeah. The penalty yeah. of leadership is when you win, mm -hmm. you get partial credit, the team gets credit, but you get credit for the lead. But then y'all lose, it's your fault. You didn't fault, do man. enough. That's the penalty you got to face when you want to be in that position. So Jalen Green has led the Rockets to a 10-game winning streak, uh, including an OT win over the Thunder last night without SGA. So Rockets are still a game behind the Dubs for the last playing spot. If the Dubs miss the postseason entirely, how will that impact the Big Three's future with the team? I don't. I, I mean, I don't think their their future is dependent on making the playoffs or the play in or not. I mean, you know, it's it's. This is real basketball. The eighth seed is the original playoff. So the fact that you're in the 10th seed just lets you know how good you really are. So um, I don't think this determines if Houston gets it or we get it. You know, they know that this summer is very important for them moving forward with rebuilding or trying to build a championship contender, no matter if they get into the playoffs and go to the Western Conference Finals or miss it, they, they, they still know they have things that they got to take care of. Yeah, but just even from a, a trust standpoint, like Draymond missed 20-plus games this season. He plays those games. I think they're square in the playoffs, somewhere around fifth or sixth seed. So now coming into next year, like you said, go they gave him that 100 mil. See, uh, you can't think like that. If you think like that, then that means they're going to go into the summer not doing shit. Right, if they think, well, if Draymond played every game, we'll be this, be so we're fine. No, yeah. you, you got to go into the, the playoffs looking at the, the record and, you know, where you guys are, how you are. No, that's my point, though. So they can't look and say that, but the point is he missed 25-plus games. That's where they could have been, but from a trust standpoint, now going into next season, what's going to stop you from missing 25 mm -hmm. more this season? Yeah. You know what well, I mean? you yeah. Like, we love you, we need you on the court, but if you keep doing this shit, like, so do you think, depending on like where they, if they make the playoffs, how far they advance in the playoffs, if they do, like, will that determine like the dramatic moves that they make over the summer? I think say they do make it to the conference finals, which I don't think is going to happen. But if they do, it shouldn't in the summertime. They might not make it's momentum. crazy. It would be moves. momentum at that point, I think. Like, yeah. Or they can make crazier moves because people want to come there. Positive momentum, yeah. right? You look at it like, all right, where we are now, how we got here. If we can somehow start to go this way, yeah, I think that's what we talk about the Kaminga shit. I'm like, Kaminga, get up out of there because it's a crumbling building, right? So if you're if you're going this way while the building is starting to crack up top and you're starting to see dust coming down, you're like, all right, we need to get somebody up there to patch this shit up. So if this is patching it up, you can look in the summer and you can say, all right, it might not be too bad. It might not be too bad over here. Maybe we can, you know, forge this thing a little bit. But if you don't go up, I think in the summertime, you look to make some moves. I mean, Clay's going to be a free agent. Obviously, Steph's happiness, the most important thing in the twilight of his career. Still want to make those pushes. Still want to try and be a, a championship-level squad. And get, like you pointed out, playing is now top 10. So if, if you finish out of the, even the playing, yeah, that's a whole really other level of nastiness. Good. Yeah. Like, 